Now, when we look at the nodes, that's really significant because the sun and earth is what I be and the nodes are what I see. Seeing and being part of the primary operative we on this path in life. So in other words, there's this great vertical power between your sun and your earth. What is grounding the light of your conscious awareness in the physical form here in the earth or on the other side, the design crystal, the unconscious light of genetic inheritance and the unconscious 25th. physical form. So this is the being. What we are aware of is only a third of the story. I like the way I heard Ra describe it, is that this is a third, and this is a third, and the other third is here, whatever that complete design is. So being is the internal variable being, sun, earth, sun, both sides. That is the programming of your life's work. And then we get to the nodes where we see the programming of seeing. What do we see as we walk along this path in our reality? So when we look at the nodes, it's really significant. Remember, sun and earth, the IB. Nodes are what I see. The external variable that shows us our line of geometry. So we have the future the North Lunar Node, the past, that South Lunar Node, being Sun Earth and seeing the nodes. On the conscious personality side, you are aware of that. Unconscious design side, good luck. Takes a while to witness that as it comes out. It's not something that you're constantly aware of, processing, thinking about, trying to figure out all that stuff. It's just not. In fact, if you're operating in alignment, it'll all work out perfectly. It'll do what it needs to do. You don't have to figure this out. But since you and I, we're all human design geeks, we want to help ourselves understand it for ourselves and others. We want to do this work. So if we look right away here, look at the North Node in this configuration, okay? The fact that it's the 60th gate here in an undefined center. As far as the personality cons is concerned, it thinks that that is an undefined root center, meaning pressure and stress is here. Yeah, a great deal of pressure. Thinking that you have to hurry, hurry, hurry. I've got to get over this limitation. I've got to push, I've got to force. I feel limited, frustrated, stuck. What's wrong with me? Now, this is what they're seeing. And there's a great deal of pressure for them to see because that is their personality nodes how they're seeing the nodes are important for us because they give us a way to see is it consistent or not here the awareness is inconsistent it's our slice of the 32 sliced pie according to raw because 64 divided by 2 is 32 and all of us have a specific framework of how we see and only when we see in that way are we going to have any opportunity to be able to fulfill our purpose because where the nodes are is the path that we're walking in life on the unconscious side on the personality side it's the way that we see on that path and it's how we get to that place of fulfillment it's the alignment together they are a storyline now right away here we can see there is a dilemma for this personality doesn't have a consistent way of seeing in the world it doesn't it means at times they're blind and so you end up in a situation where you try to explain to them what they should see or could see or might see and they get very confused you remember keynotes of confusion here transcend confusion bring about order hmm they get confused because they may not be attuned I love this word attuned attunement to the path that they're walking to the trajectory, the place in space, deciding with their authoritative process is what gets them there, not trying to analyze all this to figure it out. So remember where your client is at. If you try to go too deep, you may get overwhelmed. But 
you for you, you may not be able to have the time and energy to explain all this with your client, but to be aware for yourself that the personality does not have a consistent way of seeing. Even if you see in the full totality of this person's chart, that 60 is supposed to be defined because it's unconsciously defined. They are going to be confused. Another thing, they're a six line. You talk to them about their exalted nature and purpose of seeing when they're under 30, good luck. You're going to lose them, most likely. So don't confuse them, hey? The theme here is receptor mechanics. Just the beginning of what conditioning is only on the surface. Watch. Receptor mechanics. For the very beginning of the conditioning, what we have here in this configuration are six centers that are open. And you can see so many of the aspects of the personality beginning with the North Node. Yeah? And then we have our Mercury and Venus and Mars and Saturn and Pluto. None of them operate consistently. And please do your best to translate the planets into words that that person can identify with. So you say communication and thinking, values, maturing energy, or immature energy dynamics. You say discipline, limitation, constraint. You say truth, transformation, psychology, that kind of thing. Do your best, hey? It's like you're looking at symbols and you're translating it to them. That's what we are as analysts. We're translators. And you can see right away for this being who you think you are. This right here is going to lay the foundation for who they think they are. Right there. That is what the conscious personality consciously identifies with. Just that. As far as the consistency. And you can see right away for this being, what's going to lay down that foundation is the ego G throat combination. This twin definition along with the three active hanging gates that are a part of it. That thing right there, consistent island, is what that person is consciously, constantly aware of. Now, remember your format energies and the timing of such. Everything operating in a pulse here. Why? Especially because they've got a format energy of the 60. And then this abstract cyclical nature over time needing retreat in order to process and to be aware and to express that memory. Or if there were logic, and there is one logic, two logics here, that is about the pattern and it's future oriented. So remember, how the body graph functions is how you're going to interpret and explain. So much of who this being is, probably in terms of the way that they live this out, is the illusion of their lives. Most of it is lost to conditioning. You as an analyst are here to understand the passenger and their mind's process. Because those centers, what they do, oh, they screw us up, don't they? As far as we believe the mind story, avoid confrontation and truth, lie. Do it all by yourself. Do it fast. Hang on. Hold on. Don't let go. Pretend to be certain. And what's that over there? Squirrel. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Losing focus. We're here to understand the mind of the passenger. So when you look at this configuration, you have to see there's so much more that the personality is not going to be aware of because of all that openness. That openness breeds conditioning breeds more and more very powerful conditioning the more you believe or identify with the I inside of your head about yourself when you believe that I is who you are who you think you are and I know it takes years my friends it's taken me years to let go of that negative and false assumption of belief that I know what I'm talking about inside my head about myself or in context with what I think the other person is doing, why they're doing what they're doing. You know, if I'm projecting, I bet they did this because they want that. Meh. Seven-centered, homogenized construct. As if 
the other has a choice. They're playing out the program or not. So am I. We don't have a choice. It is what it is. And the more that you align with the form principle, following your decision-making strategy, honoring the integrity of your differentiated cognition, you get to see the truth of this too. It's kind of like me explaining to a blind man what the sun looks like and flowers and grassy hills when they have never seen colors in their life until you experience this for yourself, until you break through the shattering, the not self mind's hold on your life, you won't necessarily come from this place of authenticity yet. That's why we have a three and a half year waiting period for you to get certified because we want you to have a tipping point at least of awareness so that you're aware when you're passing down the message along your fractal line to your people that you're here for. All of us are here for somebody. They're just waiting for us to be awakened enough for us to get the message along to them. And that's when they show up. When the teacher is ready, the student appears, hey? So shadows, not knowing what to feel, avoiding confrontation and truth, not knowing when to say no, when enough is enough, hurrying to get under pressure and to get things done. There we go. Hurrying under pressure and to get things done. Not knowing what to fear, so holding on to things that are unhealthy. Trying to convince oneself that one is sure and certain of things. Not knowing what is interesting, so we lose focus. All of those things being shadows, potentially, when you believe your mind's story. Everything that's not personality is not personality. He said that, passing on the message. I know it seems kind of simple and dumb, but it is what it is. When we're looking at the personality in this way, even if they're going to share the illusion of having the same body with this imprint, it's only an illusion. Basically, the unconscious doesn't have anything to do with the conscious personality. It's just one of the strange things about how this mechanism works. So when you're looking at somebody's graph, you're not just looking for the big chunky white spaces or the things in between. You're looking at underneath the surface so much more there for us to be aware of and play with. There. Everything that's not personality. It's just not personality. It's not aware, consciously, perceptually aware. So if we look at the, it, this body graph, in that respect, there are 23 completely open channels. Completely open. What does that mean? It means they are reflected channels. All of these channels being reflected as far as the receptivity to others. This is where we have openness, an abundance of openness, wisdom, and learning potential about others. And what does the mind do when there is a large open channel there? Somebody sticks that channel into them. And now immediately we blame, says the mind. Why are they so judgmental and bitchy? Have you ever noticed how insatiably judgmental they are? <laughs> or opinionated. Why are you so opinionated? Why are you so fixed in what you say you think? Lavina, why are you so emotional? <laughs> yeah. Other people where we are fixed as far as our nature is concerned, other people being open there can see our difference. And what happens to us as children is we get blamed for our difference. Why are you so competitive? Don't be so competitive with your sister. You have to support your sister, says the tribal ego nature mom. Support your sister. Don't be competitive. Let her win sometimes. What? See that? Isn't that interesting? What happens when we see somebody's definition and they have, let's see, three or four definitions. This one has a ton. Boy, are they ever defined. Mm -mm. Not to the mind, anyway. So we look at this personality, how the personality has got to deal with 23 open channels, 23 receptor fields. 
anything that is a receptor field is a conditioning field because this is not who this being is. You have receptivity there, meaning you will never broadcast consistently there, meaning you can never trust as an authority for you to make decisions any place that you have a totally open receptor field. Now you can learn wisdom. You can learn wisdom about others. If you look at a cycle chart, as an example, remember I was saying up here, oh my gosh, I am learning from these people who are so incredibly organized and detailed and opinionated. And man, do they really know what they're talking about? Because they can be consistent with what they say, with what they think, with what they express. Hallelujah. It's not me. It's me in receptivity, wisdom potential with others, specifically learning about others because this is a receptor field. Receptor field is not who this being is. Every single one of these channels, all 23, have a strategy. Shadows, remember. 23 open channels. It's not just a matter of, oh, we've got these open centers and here's that not self strategy. But you see, we also have sub themes of the not self strategies that run out of every single gate that is in those centers. And you have not self strategies that are in the open centers, open gates, I should say, gates in the open position on the other side. And then you have the quantum of that not self strategy that emerges in an open channel. And can you see how choiceless and helpless the human beings are now? How subject to conditioning we are. Never again mm, idolizing anybody else's design because you see, oh my gosh, you have so much definition. Sorry, that's not the point. Guess what Ra said would be his ideal design? total openness, openness to everything. The more open you are, there is more of a field of receptivity to life, to others. We don't want to get rid of that. That's where we party hardy. That's where we have fun out there in the openness where we experience life. That's where we meet the other. That's where we have the juicy encounters. Oh, I'm thinking sex. <laughs> there it is. You see, open to sexuality because that's open for me. 23 open channels conditioning this person. So there's this personality with its two definitions and its bright, shiny G-Center broadcasting its identity. And then there are open channels conditioning all of this. So the other side of this is there's a beautiful side if the conditioning and shadow state is ugly, the beautiful side is that each and every one of those 23 open channels represents a potential for wisdom. So when we look at the body graph in this way, we can see that polarity between pain and wisdom, between suffering and I could say sweetness or success according to my nature. Embrace your shadows. Learn to look at the dark contrasted with the light of your awareness. See it for the maya, the play, the illusion it is. See the mind as a translator of everything that's around you. And remember, the mind is for others because all of this is for others any place that we have open is a place of receptivity, potential awareness of others, potential for wisdom, the receptivity, how thrilling it is to embrace a receptive ability to embrace and accept all of those places of wisdom, being agents of your transformation without them impacting the way that you decide. Because remember, your authority is paramount. Your authority is yours. Your process, if it's a process, your way, it's your way. So for our intelligence, the moment we are seeing correctly, when we're seeing with 
attunement and alignment if we were seeing the way that we are naturally designed to see our world would be a very different place incredibly different believing the body because it is the experience of this life and remember again it is the hardware body is the life hardware to our software they need each other in order for us to experience the sum totality of what this life has to offer us so it's not negating or hating on or shaming or blaming the personality there is no fault this is the manual for no fault living according to Ra. yes so it's not a problem unless you make it so it's just an awareness you have your own truth your design will tell you what your truth is and you are here to help guide that other in it as an analyst guide that other to the awareness that is true for them not for you you can impart your awareness at times if they ask but it's not that you have to make it be something that you are certain of or that you are aware of because only they can be aware of their own authority process channels themselves are not wise unless you've got a particularly wise line like a fully mature six line process only the openness holds wisdom so this is an illusion if you're not seeing the way that you are intended to see what do you get you get bitterness you get frustration you get anger you get disappointment and yet if you're seeing with unattached observation of what is moving through you the openness instead of it being personal to you the potential for wisdom is absolutely extraordinary and I'll tell you from experience it's not like I can hold that constantly I have emotional waves too but there becomes this tipping point where you are out of the suffering of identifying with I and life becomes much more magical serendipitous good fortune good luck abounds however it is that it's designed to come to you the pain doesn't last forever like it felt like it did back in the day I'm not there for months obsessing about how I'm going to kill myself anymore thank God the openness holds the wisdom the wisdom of what life is about out there it's specific to you because only you can live your life yeah so what have you encountered what are those inherent truths that you can stand as a living example of six lines what is that inherent truth for you who are fives that you can bring the message out into the world to strangers impact us what is the inherent truth fourth line friendly beings who are here to uh, be opportunists and penetrate into the network with your familiarity and your solid process of individuation what is it you threes oops and finish threes what have you trialed and erred with you found does not work that you can preach and say hey this did don't do that 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 wall that's hard don't bang your head against that wall that'll hurt you know second lines what are you naturally gifted at that other people tell you all the time that you're so good at you're genius at this thing what is that expression of you your truth that other people call you out on first lines your solidity your investigative capacity to be an expert and authority what is it that you have developed over your lifetime and found the foundation that you can now teach and resolve our fears about do you see your personality construct if I were speaking to just the five or just the one or whatever it is on the personality side that is part of your great big role that you're here to express in the fullness of your educational hmm, experiential developmental process when you are your own authority and you have found those big shoes and you're wearing that big costume of your life's purpose your life's work which happens sometime from 50 and beyond my friends no rush I don't get here what is that thing that you identify with the oneness 
Well, all of these open places, you are a one there. The two-ness, then you are two. Everyone has everything. And yet our resonant frequency, like how neurons that fire together, wire together, or like there, there are grooves of how you think about things in your brain. If you're personality three, like me, that is the way for your personality construct. Only the openness holds the pure potential wisdom that is out there for you to grasp or to see or to know the way that you interpret life. So back to our chart here, hanging gates. Yeah, they are enormous. The power of our genetics show the enormous conditioning power because hanging gates are always looking for the perfect binary. What's on the other side? So you mean, you see, the meaning here of the hanging gate is that this is what we're attracted to on the other side of the channel. And so we're looking for the other side. I want to give you something to contemplate. Maybe write this down if you're a strategic and you want to remember. When you're looking for difference, that is the very moment that you're losing your own difference. When you're looking for the other, when you're trying to connect, trying to figure it all out, trying to make decisions with the other side of the channel. Oh, I want you because with you, I feel whole. That's the moment you're getting conditioned. You're losing your difference. One of the reasons why I recognize this is a recurring theme and a factor within my experience of guiding people through this for the past many years is that one of the most common things that happens is that your life becomes smaller. Now, my perception perspective may be skewed because I deal with a lot of projectors. But instead of initiating and being out there, having the, letting the good times roll with all of those generators, we retract to wait for the right recognition, invitation, and whatever our process of authority is. And there is less of that out there-ness. And what happens is when you are alone in your own aura, you are more likely to have the ability to de condition. And you may find that you do not want to be around those big crowds anymore, anymore, or those groups of people anymore. And you're very selective, or we could say considerate of your body's way, whatever your authority happens to be. Instead of that genetic imperative to bond with what is different constantly, looking for <laughs> oh, my mind just had, you know, that little um, story when you were a kid, are you my mother? Are you my mother? Are you my mother? That little duck that was looking for its mom, <laughs> instead of these little gates trying to find the other side, trying to identify, trying to make decisions about the other side. Instead of that, we have an awareness potential and we operate in alignment and authenticity so that it's not that we're ignoring or trying to avoid others who have that, but that we come in contact with the right other, the right bridging trait, not just any old bridging trait, just trait, just stuff your healthy, feel good spleen in mind, please. So I'm not just randomly out there attaching quickly to anybody who has, feels like they could be safe and secure. Mm -mm. Not like that. Not anymore. Okay. Whoa. Hang on. I keep trying to click the mouse. To, there we go. <laughs> to get to the right place. When you look at this configuration of personality, remember, you can see so much of what the personality is doesn't truly accept what it is, what it truly is, you know? It doesn't know. How can it know? Unless it's experimenting with making decisions that it can trust. So you can see that the sun in the seventh gate is always going to be attracted to 31s, right? There is always this lack of completion in the way in which the sun is looking at things because it's trying to find the other side. For the sun in the seventh gate, they do not na naturally see themselves as having a true role because they don't have consistent influence and their mind is always looking for it. 
And so are they a natural planner as far as a leader? The twos are unaware. They have to be called out on their gifts and talents. They're unaware. And what the mind is going to think, that 31 is always going to be accepted as conditioning. Is it the right 31 though? Only the decision, the spontaneous response will tell the truth with this case. So when you have a gate and you don't have the other side, the harmonic gate activated, your mind considers it to be a failing or a fault. Even though we have definition down here, the mind has no idea. It still considers failing or fault on the other side of the channel because the personality has no connection to the design in truth. So you have the 16, you don't have the 48. I don't have enough depth. Your mind thinks it's a fault. So that becomes a deep conditioning field. Fear of inadequacy in an undefined open splenic center. The open splenic center is holding on to things that aren't good for you. So holding on to certain things that are not healthy, you think you need to do that in order to have depth. And those things that you hang on to, they end up being bad for you because you're making decisions from fear instead of responding to what is good for you. Hexagram 39 is duration, the gate of continuity. The only thing which endures is change. The center itself is the splenic awareness. Within the circuitry, it is the ego. So we now have layers of not self strategy that we can see. If you look at the splenic system, two very powerful forces, that 48 and that 32. And then we've got the open undefined root going to that undefined splenic, very open splenic. So insecure and being under pressure, being afraid and being under pressure and not really having the awareness to know what can endure and thinking that's a physical failing. I'm afraid so I can't take action because I don't have enough depth says the mind. That's how you would keynote that. Now, remember, you can say may. I always preface, I try to remember, I'm going to, I'm going to share with you now, my friend, now that we've talked about your definition, I'll segue into the openness. and I'll say, this is what I'm doing right now. I'm going to pretend that I'm you. I'm going to speak as if I'm your mind inside of your head about yourself. And while I do this, I'm, I say, I'm going to point at those things that I'm talking to in order to show you where your mind is stuck in places that maybe do not serve you. Remember to use the phrases may, could, likely, not certainties, because yeah, it's conditioning. What if they accidentally, lucky for them, stumbled upon waiting for response rather than initiating? Might not be as much of a problem. So this is part of what you can analyze with respect to compassion for their dilemma. Not telling them what to do, just asking them to experiment with questioning that thought. The thought being, I don't have enough depth and I'm afraid I'm gonna be a failure. This is not gonna continue, so I'm not gonna give it a try. I don't know if this is gonna be safe or healthy. So I'm gonna hold on to this other thing that obviously doesn't work for me. Maybe it's a person, romantic relationship, partnership. Maybe things will get better. Or maybe the work will get better because maybe that boss will be fired and then the owner of the company will see how wonderful I am. You see? The mind story, just living in illusory land. And if you like it there, good for you. If you don't, then experiment and see. So that this well, this gate of depth, you have the ability to connect with others and facilitate or encourage or recognize or identify their depth. That's what you're here for. So you say there's this person who is asked to do something and in the background there's this multi-layered fear. Yeah, fear of inadequacy, of driving mental force that is a not self strategy that impacts the way the mind makes the decisions. I have to take spontaneous action to the resolve this fear of not having enough depth. I don't have the solution. So I'm going to take action in order to avoid this failure 
or maybe I get frozen in fear and I'm not going to take action because I don't want to be seen as a failure. Flip side, I don't want to be seen as a success. Can I tell you? Back in the day when I was very, very wealthy, I hid that wealth from my family because I was afraid what they would think of me. So fear of success is a real thing. If it's completely open, you may not know what to fear. And yet when there's activations that are pointing there, we call them mental conditioners. These are some of the themes that that person may in fact identify with. Can you give them something to remind them not to believe that mind story and to remind themselves to come back to, Am I responding? Does this feel satisfying? You know, is this a good use of my time and energy and so forth? So it's not just about the larger open receptors that we have, these open centers and the catch all phrases that we know already to describe them. But here there are strategies that are going to impact us negatively in not just these open gates, but all the open channels as well. That's a lot all the open channels, receptivity. What happens when somebody else brings that open channel to you or your design brings that open channel? This is dominance when one person has it and the other person doesn't. So if we go back and look at this channel illustration again, you can see right away, it's an enormous impact, the conditioning, the openness, layer by layer by layer by layer from the people. To wrap things up, I can tell you from experience that I did not love myself when I first started this experiment. I looked in the mirror. I constantly saw shame, blame, guilt, fault, regret, something wrong with me, something bad, broken, and flawed. I could not smile at myself in the mirror and love myself unconditionally as I was. It was painful. Where my life had li ended me up, I thought, was deeply embarrassing and I hid, I hid a lot of what I really was. You being in this experiment, you being a potential analyst or an analyst in training, you too can have this transformation and also affect those lives that you touch with this work. Ra says, I am more than a teacher. I am an aware being looking for company. As I repeat regularly, the nine-centered being is here for communion and the expression of outer authority. Variable points clearly to the mechanical potential of the consciousness field. We are here to express the uniqueness of our filtering of existence. There is no right or wrong outer authority. The outer authority, like you, is here to be unique. Human design teaches acceptance and respect so that you can love yourself. And I feel very grateful that you've been with me this long to be able to receive the message and to take it out into the world in your own way. Thank you so much for your time and attention. If you would like to continue the training and learn more, we have many teachers starting at the International Human Design School next semester. Darshana Deborah Matthews is going to be starting PTL 1, semester 1, on May 22nd. Lynette Crisfield is going to be teaching PTL 1, semester 2, on May 17th. Brian Stout is going to be teaching PTL 1, semester 3, on May 17th, next month. And I am going to be teaching PTL 2 semester 1 on May. Lynette is going to be teaching PTL 2 semester 2 May 18th. And Darshana Deborah Matthews is going to be teaching PTL 3 semester 1 May 23rd. I'm going to be teaching PTL 4 on May 18th, and that is your preparation, mentoring, and final exam prep for you to become a certified analyst. If you have any further questions, we have a frequently asked questions area on our website, and I feel complete for now. Thank you so much for